All right, ready to dive into some seriously useful knowledge. Yeah. Today, we're tackling something we all struggle with, procrastination. Oh, yeah. We've given us some great research on beating this bad boy, specifically a guide designed for college students on overcoming procrastination, and it's packed with evidence-based techniques. So we're here to help you unlock its secrets. Think of this as your personalized procrastination playbook. We'll uncover the WHY behind your delaying tactics and give you actionable tools to actually get things done. That's right. First things first. Let's figure out WHY you procrastinate. This guide dives into some common culprits, like fear of failure, the perfectionism trap, or just plain lack of interest. That's where the journaling tip comes in. By tracking your procrastination patterns, you'll start to see those triggers and understand your unique procrastination profile. I love that. Yeah. It's like detective work, but for your own brain. Yeah. You track what you put off, when you do it, and what excuses you use. Exactly. It's about noticing patterns. Let's say you have a research paper coming up. By tracking your procrastination habits, you might realize you always delay starting big projects. That's a huge clue. So instead of feeling overwhelmed by the entire paper, we need to break it down. Didn't the guide have a name for that? Chunking. Chunking, okay. It's about transforming a monster task into bite-sized pieces. Okay. Instead of write a research paper, it becomes brainstorm topics today, find three sources tomorrow, and so on. Oh, I see. Suddenly, it feels way more manageable. And speaking of manageable, the guide talks about SMART goals, right? Yes. SMART goals are your secret weapon. They stand for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Think of them as a laser focus for your intentions. So instead of vaguely saying, I'll study chemistry, a SMART goal would be... Something like, I'll review chapters 3 and 4, make flashcards for the key concepts, and finish the practice problems from those chapters all by 8 p.m. Wow, there's no room for procrastination there. It's clear, it's focused, and it has a deadline. Exactly. And here's where things get really interesting. Remember our friend chunking? Yes. Well, smart goals and chunking work perfectly together. Okay. You can break down even those smaller smart goals into even tinier chunks. It's like a double whammy against procrastination. Okay, I am already feeling more motivated. But what about when even those smaller tasks feel daunting? Well, that's where we bring in a technique that's almost like a game. Have you heard of the Pomodoro technique? It's a brilliant little technique. Imagine this. Right. You set a timer for 25 minutes and work on a single task with laser focus. No distractions, no detours. When the timer goes off, you take a five-minute break. Then repeat. So it's like interval training, but for your brain. Does <laughs> the guide explain why this 255 split works so well? It's all about working with your natural attention spans. Research shows that we can only really focus intensely for about 25 minutes before our minds start to wander. The short breaks act like refresh buttons, allowing you to come back recharged and ready to tackle the next 25-minute chunk. That makes so much sense. I'm always amazed by how much clutter seems to appear on my desk when I have a deadline. Is that just me, or is there something going on there? You're not alone. Remember that Princeton University study we mentioned earlier? Yeah. It found that clutter actually competes for your attention, making it harder to concentrate. So it's not just about being tidy. It's about giving your brain a clear space to focus. Mm. What are some of the guide's tips for taming distractions? Well, the first step is creating a dedicated workspace and decluttering it. Only keep the absolute essentials within reach. Then think about how you can use technology intentionally. Right. Our phones can be such time suckers. I've heard of those website blocking apps, but I've always been a little hesitant to try them. They can be incredibly helpful. You can schedule blocks of time when certain websites or apps are inaccessible. It's like giving yourself permission to disconnect and focus. I love that. It's about taking control of your tech instead of letting it control you. Okay, okay. all of these techniques are fantastic, but what about when we inevitably slip up? I mean, we're all human, right? Absolutely. This guide emphasizes self-compassion. We all procrastinate. It's part of the human experience. Beating yourself up about it only makes things worse. So instead of saying, ush, I wasted the whole day, we should try. Try reframing it. Maybe something like, okay, I procrastinated today, but I learned from it. Tomorrow, I'll try a different approach. It's about acknowledging the slip up without letting it derail your progress. I like that. It takes the pressure off. The guide also mentioned the power of positive affirmations, right? Yes. Positive affirmations are like little pep talks for your brain. Instead of focusing on your flaws, you highlight your strengths and potential. Things like, I am capable, or I can achieve my goals, can really shift your mindset. It's like giving yourself permission to succeed. Speaking of success, I love that the guide suggests finding an accountability buddy. 
Having someone to share your goals with, someone who can cheer you on and offer support can be incredibly motivating. Whether it's a friend, a family member, or a study group, it makes a huge difference. It's like having your own personal cheering squad. Okay, last but not least, the guide introduced this intriguing technique called mental contrasting. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? It's a powerful visualization technique. But it's not just about picturing yourself achieving your goals. It's about pairing those positive images with potential obstacles and D, your plan to overcome them. So it's not just daydreaming about success. It's also about being prepared for those bumps in the road. So you're thinking about what could go wrong, and then you come up with a plan to deal with it. Precisely. Let's say your goal is to finish that research paper. Imagine yourself feeling that sense of accomplishment when you submit it, but then also visualize those potential obstacles. Maybe you hit a wall with your research, or you get distracted by social media. So if you know you tend to get sucked into social media, you might preemptively schedule those website blockers we talked about. Exactly. Or if you struggle with research, you might plan to visit the library or reach out to a professor for guidance. That's a great idea. It's like creating a mental map for success, complete with detours and backup routes. I love that analogy. It's about being proactive and anticipating challenges rather than letting them derail you. This has been such an insightful deep dive. We've uncovered the psychology behind procrastination, learned about smart goals and chunking, explored the Pomodoro technique, and even talked about the power of self-compassion and visualization. It's a holistic approach to tackling procrastination, recognizing that it's not just about willpower, it's about understanding your own patterns, setting yourself up for success, and being kind to yourself along the way. Absolutely. So what's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from this deep dive? I'd say pick one technique that really resonated with you and commit to trying it this week. Maybe it's the Pomodoro technique or setting smart goals for your next big project. You might be surprised at what you can achieve. That's great advice. Remember, it's about progress, not perfection. And don't forget to share your procrastination-busting journey with us using our show's hashtag. Until next time, happy achieving.